Imagine you're a patient lying in a hospital bed struggling with severe jaundice and shivering with fever. You've just been told that you have a rare type of anemia called hemolytic anemia. What's even more alarming is that your liver seems to be failing, and your red blood cells are being destroyed faster than your body can produce them. Despite multiple blood transfusions, the doctors can't pinpoint the root cause of your condition. In February 1977, this was the reality for a 42-year-old woman who had been admitted to the hospital. Over time, her condition worsened until she developed what doctors called a hepatic precomatose condition, an impairment of consciousness typically seen in severe liver disease. Her liver was shrunken, her spleen enlarged, but despite their best efforts, doctors were at a loss to explain why this was happening. One day, her husband who rarely visited, showed up unexpectedly and brought her some cooked blackberries. Hospital staff warned her not to eat outside food, but the incident piqued their curiosity. They decided to run an experiment and fed the berries to some lab mice. Within days, all the mice had died. Alarmed, they sent the blackberries for analysis, and the results were chilling. The berries contained a dangerous compound called N-nitrosodimethylamine, or NDMA, a potent carcinogenic substance, at a concentration of about 300 milligrams. This was no coincidence, it was a deliberate poisoning. The woman's health improved temporarily after the incident but once the poison was identified, her mental and physical state rapidly deteriorated. The husband was eventually convicted of murder but sadly she didn't survive. But what does this tragic case have to do with something as common as bacon? Well, NDMA is a type of nitro salmon, the same class of compounds found in processed meats like bacon, ham and sausages. In 2015, the International Agency for Research on Cancer IIRC, declared processed meats a group 1 carcinogen, meaning they have sufficient evidence to conclude that these foods can cause cancer. What makes processed meat harmful? Nitrates and nitrites, the compounds used to preserve the meat, are the prime suspects. Under certain conditions these compounds can transform into nitrosamines like NDMA in the body. But before you toss out your bacon and sausages let's dive deeper into what this really means. How dangerous are nitrosamines? Well, in the case of the woman poisoned by her husband, the 300 mg dose was enough to seriously damage her liver. But to put that in perspective, if you wanted to reach a similar level, through processed meat consumption, you'd need to eat an unrealistic amount. Based on the highest recorded levels of nitrosamines found in processed meat, you would have to consume over 3,500 kg, that's more than the weight of a large SUV, of frankfurters in one sitting. So, what about everyday consumption? Let's break it down. Most of us aren't eating frankfurters by the truckload, but some studies suggest that even small doses can increase cancer risk. The IARC report concluded that eating just 50 grams of processed meat daily, about three slices of bacon, can increase your relative risk of colorectal cancer by 18%. But what does that actually mean? If you take 100 people who don't eat processed meat, about eight of them might develop colorectal cancer over their lifetime, if those 100 people start eating 50 grams of processed meat every day, that number goes up to 9. An increase? Yes, but not as alarming as it first sounds. And this is where things get tricky. Observational studies like the ones used in these reports rely heavily on self-reported data, asking people to remember exactly what they ate and how much over the past year. These studies can't tell you whether the bacon caused the cancer or if it was something else in a processed meat-heavy diet. For instance, are these people also consuming more unhealthy fats, sugary foods, or smoking more? One famous example is a study from 1994 that suggested hot dogs increase brain cancer risk in children. But they didn't ask if the children put ketchup on their hot dogs, if they added a bun, or if the hot dogs were paired with sugary drinks. Without understanding the entire diet and lifestyle it's hard to draw concrete conclusions. Now let's explore the nitrite and nitrate compounds found in both processed meats and, surprisingly, in vegetables like spinach and beets. Did you know that vegetables provide five and a half times more nitrates than cured meats? In fact, no added nitrates processed meats often use celery juice, which is naturally rich in nitrates, to achieve the same effect. Once inside your body, nitrates can turn into nitrite, and nitrite can transform into nitric oxide a compound that helps relax your blood vessels and improve circulation. Some researchers even label nitrates and nitrites as nitric oxide therapeutics because of their beneficial effects on blood pressure and exercise performance. Ever seen beetroot powder supplements marketed for heart health? That's because they're packed with nitrates. So, should you be scared of bacon? 
It's more about balance and the big picture. Consider the dose. For nitro salmons to pose a real risk you'd have to consume a tremendous amount over a long period. Take NDMA, the compound that killed the woman with the blackberries, as an example. Based on animal studies you would need to eat more than a kilogram of processed meat every single day for years to reach a similar cancer risk. The real takeaway? Don't let fear-mongering headlines shape your dietary choices without context. The dose makes the poison, and it's important to consider what's practical in the real world. If you love the occasional bacon breakfast, it's unlikely to be a death sentence, but moderation and focusing on high-quality, less-processed meat options, when possible, is always a good approach. So the next time you hear that processed meat is as dangerous as smoking, remember, context is everything. And while it's smart to limit consumption, let's be mindful of the science and realistic about risk. As we wrap up, let's summarize the key points we've discussed today. Nitro salmons found in processed meats and some vegetables can pose health risks, but context and moderation are crucial. Remember, the dose makes the poison. Enjoy your favorite foods in moderation and prioritize a balanced diet rich in fresh, unprocessed options. It's important to stay informed and make choices based on scientific evidence rather than sensational headlines. By understanding the risks and benefits, you can make better decisions for your health. If you found this video helpful, please remember to like, share, and subscribe for more insightful content on health and wellness. Your support helps us continue to provide valuable information. Thank you for watching and take care.